Doug, and he's Brian. Um, yeah, he's Brian. Um, and we're going to tell you five reasons why Moo's new NFC available business cards are awesome. Are we affiliated with, with Moo? No. Should we be? No. Maybe. We should talk to them. Anyway, we should never talk to them. Oh, here, they, they produce lovely things. Don't here they? are five, not six and not four, five reasons why um, Moo's new NFC enabled business cards are pretty awesome. Yeah. Number one. If you get one of these and you tap on a phone, you should get, totally get a phone now. Yeah, yeah. Um, it might just be as simple as, hey, I'm Brian Mothers. I'm not Brian Mothers. I'm not Brian Mothers. Yeah, look, this hey, is, this is the Firefox Flame. Doug Firefox Balshaw, Flame. Right, okay. Yeah. I'm Doug Balshaw, and here's my contact details. <laughs> Boop. Right? I mean, that's not a good example. Well, it's not. That's because you've been tinkering with yours, isn't it? But so we try theoretically, move? that would... Yes, another one. Look, here's Anne Applegate. Is wow. she real? Uh, she's real in my head. Okay. Here's um, Anne's contact details. Well, actually, it's the City and Guilds website. But it could be her contact details if she was real. Are you telling me you can put anything on these business cards? Yeah, well, pretty much, it seems. Right, so the most pretty boring much. use of these would be... Hey, I'm Doug Belshaw. Here's my contact details. Instead of having to type them in, here you go. That's, yeah. that's the first reason. Yes, but people have a lot of contact details these days. It used to be oh so simple when you just had, you know, three digits to a telephone number, you know, call London 347. I wasn't even alive then. And, you know, some sort of one-line uh, address. Right, but, so uh, the, the, most basic, now, you know. the most basic use case is, this is me. You don't need that anymore. I'll have it back because I'm stingy. Um, and there's my contact details. You don't have to type them in. Boom. Indeed. Number one. No. Number two. Brian, how would you like to be contacted? Well, well, Doug. Um, I love video chat because obviously I'm working all over the place these days mm -hmm. and generally with a fairly strong internet connection and, um, and I use things like Skype and appear in and stuff like so that. So how on earth would anyone know where your room was or what the best way of contacting you would be unless you told me. Well, it's funny, isn't it? Because you sort of need to do I mean, exchange an email with somebody saying, hey, let's let's do a video connect. And it's just like, do you prefer Skype or Hangouts or appear in or what, what, what's your what's your yeah, medicine? And, and, and there's, a, there's, a, there's a dance that you do with someone to find the right sort of channel as opposed to directing to yours. Yeah, so I've got, uh, it's a peer to I IN, so it's um, WebRTC, so it works entirely in the browser, you don't need to install anything, sign up for anything, anything like that. So mine would be appear.in forward slash DAJ Belshaw, and if that was on one of these cards, then you can imagine that being around someone's desk and going, all oh, right, I've got a meeting with Doug now, okay, scan that, boop, and then it would take them straight into my room. Yeah. That would work really well, then you wouldn't have to remember, you wouldn't have to, that would work quite nicely, actually. It would, and I wonder, actually, I wonder if you can put multiple things on these cards, where if you're in a particular app, mm. um, you know, whether, you know, it, it could do a video call. I think it can fire sense. anything, can't it? So it could even fire up, like, Skype and connect to you, make a connection request, or... Yeah. I, I like appearing just because it is yeah. really simple, isn't it? it? Is. It's just sort of browser-based. Straight um, in there. Yeah, straight in. All good. good. That's All number two. Good. So number three, uh, music playlists. Now look, Doug Belshaw is one of these guys that only ever listens to white noise because his version of music is beyond jazz. It's beyond classical music. It's it's just it's just the the, the void of. You see, there he is. Look, he's just in another planet. That's where all his good ideas come from. Not really. He does like to listen to music, and you probably like to share music. I do. So can you imagine? This is like. Doug's playlist of awesome music. Um, but it's always changing because I'm always listening to different types of white noise. Brown noise, pink noise, yeah? So it would change on a weekly basis. Mm. So it might be, hey, Brian, have I got some music for you? Mm. But it might change on a weekly basis. And you could like do this every week. It would be different ones for different types of music. It could yeah. be... Whatever. I could see that with a little, if you did, had a little sort of mixtape logo on the background. Right? Oh, make it little, look like a mixtape. Yeah. It's just like a card, like a really thin mixtape. That would be amazing. Wouldn't it? Mm. Mm. Glad I thought of it. You didn't, I did. Oh.
four. No, it's eight. Four. Um, I thought I was going to say. Oh, running an event. You could totally use these in an event. You could use them all kinds of ways. You could use them for voting. You could use them for um, what else? Could you use? Well, yeah. I think at Outclub, we we were always trying to think of how do you get people to engage, to try stuff out, to to, to participate. I suppose as mm. opposed to you know sitting back, soaking up, and not asking any questions. And um, and I suppose this might allow you to yeah to, to vote. So this was stuff. my lanyard. It's my lanyard. Um, I can vote. Let's say I'm a bet. Yes. There's well, a million, there's 11 billion exhibitors. Yeah. Um, and uh, there's there's the wheat amongst the chaff, shall we say. Yeah. And you go up and you say, actually, boop, that is amazing. Yeah, hot sauce right here. Boop. Um, let's say it's an event where someone's speaking. It might be, because you can change these on the fly and it's instantaneous. Mm. Um, how would that work? You're about to speak. Yeah. And I'm introducing you. Yeah. And I say, hey, you know your lanyard? That doubles as a link sharing thing. So mm. if you scan your lanyard now, you'll get Brian's presentation slides. Um, and then you could change that again 10 minutes later, etc., yeah. etc. Or um, Brian, in the middle of his presentation, wants to get a little bit of audience feedback mm. and put a question on the presentation board or whatever with uh, four options and says right pop this on there and it'll direct you to the right link of the oh and then you can vote, vote on to, your to vote to vote, to vote. yeah so you, you had can change the the, the the nature of the link as you go that would work really nicely so it's basically your link to the latest thing that's happening at the conference yeah you had an idea about to buy well I did I did I thought well often in an event uh, you've got People that you know will turn up, um, but actually a lot of people you don't know whether they're going to turn up or not. And then there's a, a, always a few sort of people who so, you're so not expecting. Also you've, turn you've up. sent off for these, but you know you've done all these. But if you're running an event, you might not know until the last minute yeah. who's going to arrive. So you couldn't pre-do these, especially when they take eight days to order. No, lovingly made, lovingly made. Where's your next day delivery? Anyway, um, but so you might want to just have instead of. The names of the people you might want, like fictional characters or a pink octopus. A pink octopus, a grey buffalo, a saber toothed tiger. So you could have 500 different, so you could have 100 different creatures and five different colours of those creatures. So every, five, even though you've got 500 of these cards, they're each, they're each of them are unique. Yeah. Um, and then you could go around the event collecting evidence collecting achievements whatever it is mm -hmm. and then if you you could stay anonymous if you wanted to because you're just being a pink octopus mm -hmm. but then at the end of it you could how could you well you could incentivize people to essentially reveal who they are oh by putting um, their email address but by connecting it to their the, real their profile self. Yeah, right. their, their real so self. all of a sudden i am not a pink octopus i am doug bellshaw indeed so number four event Number five, apps and maps. Why are we putting these two together? They're two completely separate things. That's crazy. Are you saying that we're only doing this to avoid having six because we want an odd number because odd numbers are better? No, apps and maps, Ryan. Oh. Um, so imagine that you've got an app in the app store, and let's say it's called something super obvious like whiteboard or central yeah. or <laughs> something where it's a fairly generic name. And if you search Google for it or DuckDuckGo, you're going to come up with so many results, you're never going to find it. So just go to the App Store, uh, type in Central, and uh, it's it's number seven on the list. At least it usually is for me. Right. But uh, And you need to look out for the what? rubbish instructions, right? So if you just went like, boop, oh, there it is in the App Store, download. Exactly. That would work really well. It's quite like Maps, isn't it? Because Maps, you're, you, you end up going to... You're fiddling with your phone and then ending up going to a desktop because it's just got proper keys and you can put in a postcode and actually find oh that's where it is and that you know so, so I've got a, a, a bit of a, bit of a footer, chip on my shoulder about directions right mm. as a man people like almost bamboozling you with directions so you know you arrive somewhere and someone say oh did you take the a694327 because that's the best way through but sometimes the traffic 
don't understand what you're talking about. Oh, yeah, you know where it is. It's behind the red line down the street, behind the lamppost. You'll see a squirrel, and then, you know, it's just fine. And you're like, what are you talking about? So if it was just, it's here, boop. All right, okay, take me there, boom. On City Mapper or Google Maps or whatever it's going to be, mm. that would work really well. It would. Apps and Maps. If you've got some ideas of how to take the physical and make it digital, mm. what should people do? Uh, they should probably send us those ideas because we like thinking about those sort of things, don't we? Yes. So yes. Brian is Brian M. Mothers on uh, Twitter. And Doug is D.A.J. Belshaw on Twitter. And if you want to get in touch with Moo.com, we're not affiliated with them, but I'm sure they would like feedback. Uh, they're just at Moo, M-O-O. -O. Yeah. So, yeah, send us your ideas, um, and we're, we're going to think about badges, actually, open badges mm. with NFC-enabled business cards. That, oh, yeah. my friend, is the future. That is the future.